Good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, Martin here. Um, you have to excuse the potential background noise. I'm, uh, for those that haven't picked up, I'm out in Spain at the moment. I'm uh, on a two-month volunteering placement, and I've found a sort of quietish room in the council building in the north of Spain where I'm working. Uh, there's a little bit of the odd noise out and, out and about and around me, so uh, if you hear any sort of Spanish conversations in the background, then we'll just uh, carry on regardless. Um, I hope you're all well and that you've all been able to sign on and join in on the webinar okay today. Um, I always sort of said at the beginning that I take it a little bit slower as people sort of start dialing in around now, so the, the attendance sort of picks up in the first five minutes, so I don't want to go too quick and too fast. Um, but we'll still kind of get into the nuts and bolts of what a webinar is. So looking down the attendee list, we've still got some new people joining us. I think that's the, the beauty of doing such different topics each month. Um, we did volunteering in January, and last month was relationships. Today is travel, and next month's going to be about employment. So obviously, uh, depending on the, the subject, then uh, you know it has an appeal to different people, and it's good to see new people joining us today. Um, so for those that haven't really sort of come across me before, my name is Martin. Um, I've been blogging on martincity.com for two or three years, I think coming up three years. And really it's just very much been about how um, I'm a guy in a wheelchair, I rely on 24-hour care, um, I live in London, um, I've been working now since I left university, and really just sharing lots of everyday experiences where I hope the outcome is around sort of um, certainly younger disabled people realising how much is actually possible and for those including the younger disabled people who want to then start setting their own new goals and progressing forwards and then maybe some of the things that I've learned and picked up over the years can, can be of help as well. And obviously those who do know me would have read Disability Horizons, the magazine, so that's disabilityhorizons.com. And really that's a platform that I've, along with Shrin, my good friend Srinivas, um, enabling other people to share their stories. So you can kind of see that it started from my personal life experiences, but it's really grown and grown where we're creating a platform for many people to, to be able to, to share as well. Um, in terms of the, the webinar, before we move on to travel, here we go. So, to explain what a webinar is, some of you might have been expecting to see uh, I've got a, an error coming up here on my internet. Let me just check if I am online at the moment. Okay, I'm not sure how long I disappeared there for, but it seems that my internet connection dropped, which I guess is the other wonder of um, being not in my flat in London with a, a nice secure internet connection in a room. Um, I don't know how long that went for, but basically I, my, my discussion I was just having was all around the, the work I've been doing around disability, providing a platform for other people to, to talk about their experiences with a view to giving young, certainly younger disabled people a bigger view of what is possible despite having a disability, but really a, a big sort of community spirit online of learning and sharing with one another. And obviously the webinars is one of those things. So um, in terms of talking about what the webinar is, um, those of you would have picked up that you can't actually see me on a live video stream here. Um, you can hear me talking. And you can see the screen, my screen at the moment. And when we move on to the other speakers, you'll be able to see their screens as well. You'll be able to click on the poll responses and use the chat box in the Q&A session. Now, just to check that everyone sort of logged on OK and is, uh, you know, following everything that's going on and to check that the technology is working OK, um, you will notice on the right side you've got a sort of toolbar area. And there's an area that you can type in. Um, to ask questions. So if you're able to just type in on those questions there um, where you're dialing in from, uh, whether that's the country or the city, it's up to you. 
but if you all just type in the place that you're dialing in from and I can check that we're all online and everything is good and uh, apologies about the blip a moment ago so we've got Carrie Ann in Cumbria we've got Lani in Hove who are two of our guest speakers today um, we've got Karen uh, dialing in from Surrey uh, Jean's our third speaker in Whiz Beach, Cambridgeshire we've got Jenny in Edinburgh There's a few more should come in in a moment so here we go Pauline in Glasgow so we're quite a pan pan UK uh, audience today so for those of you that haven't been able to find it this chat box is on the toolbar the go to webinar toolbar on the right hand side so there'll be one screen where you're viewing what's on my screen and then there's another toolbar where there's certain things that you can do and one of them is to type in on the chat box so anyway that that's where you'll be able to ask questions later on so I think we'll uh, we'll crash on so we've got Gwen Gwen calling in from Norfolk so welcome everyone good stuff okay so obviously today is about travel um, I, th I don't know if you heard what I was saying before as well about the different webinar topics that have been covered there's been volunteering uh, relationships and now is travel um, and obviously the, the part of the reason I lined the travel up one this month was that I knew I would be out in Spain um, doing some of the traveling myself so it seemed quite apt um, and obviously for all the different reasons that you may be dialing in whether you're disabled or you have a family or friend with a disability or maybe you're in the professional sector as well um, really the, the point of this is to look at and understand the different barriers that disabled people face to travel and then also to maybe look at some of the advice and tips and hints that others who have traveled with disabilities are able to use and share that onwards so that's the general platform that we'll be sort of using the general format we'll be using today okay I'm just gonna run a quick poll here so you can all get interactive on the poll as well so I'd like to know what is the biggest worry that you have when looking to travel so obviously you can answer this from the perspective that you have it could be what you would imagine the biggest worry to be for a disabled person that's fine as well but if you click on the one that you think is the, the most worrying when disabled people are traveling and then I'll bring up the uh, bar chart at the end and we can see what you all think is, is the biggest worry Okay, there's a couple more of you still to vote. So just literally click on the poll and see which of the ones that you, you think is the biggest worry. There's finance, equipment hire, equipment damage, access, and cultural attitudes to disability. There probably would be a, a million more that I could have put, but to my mind they were the, the broader ones that, that tend to come up from my personal experiences and from friends as well that I've spoken to. Okay, so I think everyone has now voted. So we'll close the poll. I can share with you the results. So, as you can see, access seems to be the, the biggest worry. Um, and I think, you know, we're, we're going to look into this with our guest speakers a lot more, but I, I think that would have been my personal view as well, really, that out of everything, the biggest issue is if you can't get into a hotel or get around the city then the whole trip's going to be a little bit flawed so um, that's 69% of you obviously equipment damage for those of you that maybe read Horizons recently the co-editor Shrin um, he had a lot of issues with his chair being dropped out of the underside of the plane and the whole of his wheel was like basically broken off and he was landing in Sydney on the other side of the world um, so yeah equipment damage is, is also pretty fundamental as well Okay, so as I said earlier, I think possibly when I was online, but again, it may have been when I lost my connection. But um, we've got three guest speakers today, so I'm going to pass over to Jean Bedette, who's from Wings on Wheels, and she's going to talk you through her presentation and some of the work that she's been doing there. So bear with me while I just switch the presenter mode over. Hi there, Jean. Can you hear me all right? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. It's got a touch of Eurovision about it, this, hasn't it? 
It has, hasn't it? Cool. All right, well, I'm going to pass the presenter mode over like we did before, and then you can uh, roll on with your presentation, yeah? Oh, okay. Okay. Has it come up asking you to accept it? Yeah, there we go. Great. I'll let, I'll let you um, fire off, Gina. Yeah? I don't have any s screens. Have I got to click on something? Um, have you got your the slides that I sent from the email? No. No, oh, okay. I've only got a toolbar. So if you, I, I think I emailed you yesterday with the PowerPoint slides. Yes, you did. So if you just open up your slides and then you can then just present them through to everybody. I'll just find them. But the connection's working good, so this is this is good to see. There we go. All right, I'll leave you to it, Jean. There we go. Okay, thank you. Welcome everybody. My name's Jean Burdett and I'm from Wings on Wheels. We are a company that started in 1997. Um, we were asked by various people to look at travel for disabled people because they were having big problems. Um, as you can see from the slide here, a lot of the people don't know where to start. Um, they don't know how to look for a holiday, where to go for information, and a lot of the time they don't even know where they want to go or what they want to see. They have big problems with looking for the right sort of transport. Some people need transport where they need to travel in their wheelchair. Some people just need a low step so that they can climb into a vehicle. There's all sorts of different problems for different people. Accommodation is also a big one. Some people want twin bedded rooms, some people want double bedded rooms, some people need connected rooms for carers, some people want rooms with a bath with a, a bath board, some want rooms with a shower that's wheelchair accessible or roll-in, some need shower chairs, some need hoists, there's all sorts of different connotations that are needed. Meals is another one, there are diabetics, celiacs, all sorts of dietary problems, um, some people need their food pureed and things, so again it can be a big problem for people if they don't know where to look or what to ask for. Excursions, it's difficult if you want to go away on your own because you need to be able to get around the city on public transport if possible. However, we can organize excursions for people and if you do need wheelchair accessible vehicles, we can try and find these most suitable way of getting around for you. Travel insurance, passports, visas, all that sort of thing throws up all sorts of issues for people, especially if they don't have a British passport. Travel insurance is a big one, especially for people with wheelchairs, as you've heard of Shrin's problems. Um, and also for pre-existing medical conditions, they need to be covered too. And we can offer advice and help on all those issues. Again, will the airlines, boats, coaches, etc. be able to carry less able people? Some will accept them, some won't. Some are not able to, some can. Some have lots of facilities, some have none. Uh, and again, you can't always take your wheelchair. Some can accept only manual chairs. Some can accept electric chairs. Some you have to get out of your chair and walk. So there's different problems for different people. Moving on to the next slide, doesn't want to move on. Right, will the hotels have ground floor rooms or are the lifts big enough to accommodate a wheelchair? Have the bathrooms have grab rails, showers, wet rooms? Can the hotels and restaurants visited cope with special meal requirements? Will aids be available if required? All things that different people with different disabilities come across when they're traveling. Don't necessarily know where to look or what to ask. And hotels, I find, especially when I'm researching a new place, they don't tell you they have the disabled facilities, let alone exactly what is there. So you have to do a lot of research, and that's where we can help. Will there be accessible toilets on excursions? Another big question. If you're out all day, especially, you do need a wheelchair, wheelchair accessible toilet. If you use a wheelchair, they're not always available. We can help find excursions where we can find toilets that can be used or we can improvise and use other methods to be able to get toileting done. Is there anyone to assist with personal care and wheelchair pushing? I'll touch on this again later. 
Um, but a lot of people don't need a lot of help. You may just need your socks put on in the morning. You might just need someone to push you. You might just need someone to help carry your food to the table. Um, that can all be sorted out. Personal carers can be found in some countries, although they don't always speak English, which can be a problem. Um, wheelchair pushers can also often be found. But if you need a lot of help, the best way is to take your own carer with you. Then you can be sure that you've got the right help at the right time. Is there anyone available to help with problems, becoming sick, etc., whilst on holiday? If you travel alone or with your carer or relatives, friends, whatever, you will often book a package holiday from a tour operator or a travel agent and you'll be sent on your merry way with no backup at all. You may have a rep visit the hotel once a week or so for an, or a telephone number you can call if there's a problem. And again, if you're taken sick, you have to go to reception at a hotel often to get a doctor in. Um, it can be problematical for people depending on their problems. Wings on Wheels started in 1997. My co-director has been in the travel industry a very long time. He started in airlines, he went to Thomas Cook and eventually started his own business doing incentives and conferences worldwide. I joined him in 1989 helping him run the incentives and conferences all over the world for various corporate companies. Uh, we've done many big things and we've done small things as well. At that time I was working, starting to work with him. My mother was disabled, using a wheelchair and she joined a local fab club. I was asked to go along and help, ended up on the committee and then I was asked by members to start looking at disabled travel because I had a travel background. This is how we started. We did our very first trip to Thailand in 1998. We took nine people. It was a pioneering trip. All the people that came had traveled before with different charities and tour operators. And at the end of the trip, we asked, do we carry on? Are we doing this right? Or do we stop? And they all said the best organized trip they'd ever been on, and we were to carry on. And that's what we've done. So that's how we got going. And that's, we just keep going from strength to strength now, hopefully. One member of staff will accompany each party during the duration of the holiday. Our holidays are pre-organized group holidays where up to 10 people like yourselves with disabilities or your friends, your family can come along and be part of a group of 10 and those parties are escorted by a member of Wings on Wheels staff, very often myself, and one care assistant who is around to help with the people that only need minimal help. They may need help to get in the shower or put their socks on or whatever and those that need a lot of help bring their own people with them. You then have peace of mind. Whoever from Wings on Wheels staff is with you is there from the minute you check in at the airport to the minute you come back through customs on arrival in the UK. Therefore there's someone on hand to help with problems such as if you can't get in the room in your hotel, you need extension leads, um, you'll go sick, you've lost something, whatever it might be, somebody is there 24-7 to help you. If you're going away alone, we do do holidays, tailor-made holidays for individuals, couples, families, groups, etc. Then we don't normally send a member of staff with them unless it is requested. However, you would have a 24-hour number you can contact us on directly if you had a problem that needed to be sorted. You, then you can relax in the knowledge you're not on your own. No matter if you travel with us, you're always around to help you one way or the other. Either on a group, we're with you, or if you're on your own, you've got the telephone number. It gives you that extra bit of support, can open up a whole new world of possibilities because you can go away with the knowledge that there's someone there to help you if there's a problem. Inspections, all flights, transfers, hotels, etc. are all checked for suitability and wheelchair accessibility either by ourselves or our destination management companies, DMCs. These are ground arrangement service companies in the country that we are operating in and they will check out all the different elements of the holiday that you would be booking. So they will know what exactly is in the room in the hotel that you request. They can get aids for you if you need them. They can organize excursions to places that you can get a wheelchair to. And they will advise it if the places aren't suitable or what exactly is there. And then you can gauge for yourself whether you think you can manage it or not. And again, with the transport, we can do anything from a normal car 
to um, a van with one wheelchair space, to a large bus with lots of spaces, if it's a group, depending on the country you're going to and the facilities that are available in that place. Again, if it's not anything is not fully wheelchair accessible or suitable, it will be clearly mentioned to you before you book your holiday, and then you can make an advised decision as to whether that's suitable for you or whether you want to change things. A local DMC with an intimate knowledge of the country you're visiting also assists in the planning and running of your holiday. If travelling are accompanied, they will be able to assist with problems, extra excursions, etc. So if we're not there, although you've got our 24-hour number, you've also got them on hand on the end of a phone, and they may come and visit you as well, to make sure that you've always got a contact. If you go sick or you need something or you want something extra, they're there to help you. We advise all our clients in writing of the current regulations regarding passports, visas and health requirements. Some countries you have inoculations, things that are mandatory, you may need a visa to get into the country. Everybody must have six months validity on their passport beyond the date of return travel to the UK. I expect most of you know that already. And we'll keep you updated if there are any changes to these things. It's very important that every traveller has adequate travel insurance to cover pre-existing medical conditions. If you don't advise pre-existing medical conditions to your travel insurance company, they will not be covered. If you go sick with anything that is directly or indirectly pertained to be with your pre-existing medical condition, you'll have to pay in full for all your medication, your hospitalisation, everything to do with that problem. Medical equipment, including wheelchair cover, is also very important as you've heard, a shrinks problem. If you have a chair that is worth quite a lot of money, it's no good just taking normal travel insurance policy with no cover. If your wheelchair is damaged, you cannot get another one. You may not have the facilities or the money to hire one or replace it. So you must make sure your wheelchair is covered to the full replacement value wherever possible. That way, if, it is, if there is a problem and it is damaged beyond repair, you should be able to get a higher one or a new one to get you through till you get home. We insist on all our holidays that everybody must have all travel insurance. We can help with this. We do have a company we work with. However, you are free to take travel insurance with whoever you wish. We just need to have a copy of the policy on file. So if there is a problem while you're away, we can help you deal with it. Examples of places we've operated. We've operated in the UK. These are just ideas of places we've been to. We do lots more in Europe and worldwide. Currently, we have holidays in the Netherlands, Poland, and we've got a new one come out, which is to Mauritius in January. If anybody's interested in that, by the way, the closing date for booking is the 4th of May. So you really need to uh, contact us, look at the website, contact us, and we'll send you details, and then you can come along, we'd love to see you, the more the merrier. Future plans again, we're looking at all new places all the time, we've got lots of new things coming up, we're trying to run another holiday to Ecuador, another one to New Zealand, I've got lots of other places that people are asking me to do things to, and we've been trying to run a holiday to Brazil for many, many years, and I have now, hopefully, found a company with transportation that will enable us to do that. So that's another new one coming up. And we're always looking for new things to give variety. We arrange the airline flights and scheduled flights as much as we can, mainly because they tend to get a better service. Charter flights, you tend to get all sorts of problems with timings. They go at awful times of the day and the night. They are often delayed. There's all sorts of problems. So we try and use scheduled where we can. And again, with the airlines, we give all the information to the airline in advance of you traveling. So things like if you use a wheelchair, your wheelchair measurements, your wheelchair weight, what assistance you need in the airport, both ends so that we can get that all sorted for you. Any dietary requirements you need on the plane, that's also all sorted for you. All ground transfers and excursions are run using wheelchair accessible transport as far as possible. This is not possible in all places, but we'll try and find the most suitable transport available to your requirements if you're traveling on a tailor-made holiday. And where it's a group holiday, you will be advised, obviously, before you book what transport we have available. We we'll use hotels, motels, and villas with level access entrance and public areas, etc., as much as we can. 
and obviously ensuite bathrooms and wheelchair facilities if they're required. And we try and use the best available for your requirements if you're traveling on a tailor-made holiday. We will advise you at different hotels and their different possibilities so that you can make an advised decision as to which one to choose if there is a choice. And where we're doing a group holiday, there may not be fully accessible rooms in some places, but there is a carer to help. And we will do the best we can to get around any problems there are, especially with bathing and things, because we know that that's a big problem. Meals on our group holidays, we include breakfast and dinner every day. And then lunches are free for you, mainly because a lot of guests don't want a big lunch. They're quite happy to have a sandwich, a snack. And if we're out all day on an excursion, we'll stop somewhere where you can just buy something like. If someone wants a bigger lunch, they can have a bigger lunch. Some of the holidays, however, are full board. If you do a safari to Kenya, for example, in the lodges on the safari parks, that is full board. So you do get your lunch, your dinner, and your breakfast every day. And you get tea in between before the safari drives. Um, another holiday I did to China, that was all full board. So there are some that are, but we try and do half board where we can. And if it's tailor-made, then we can do meals as you wish. Some just want better breakfast. Some want bed, breakfast, and dinner. Some want full board. Some even like all-inclusive. So again, that's up to your your choice, and, and we'll work with what you ask for. Dietary requirements are catered wherever we can, and that's not normally too much of a problem. Excursions with the rearranged groups. Typically, on a week's holiday, we try and do two full-day and two half-day excursions. These will include sightseeing, boat trips, shopping all sorts of things. Um, we try and integrate with some disabled people in the country we're going to if we can as well to give them an insight of how you cope here and you an insight of how they cope out there. And Friendships are often made this way and people keep in contact which is brilliant. We also like to have that time in between the excursions for people to have a rest enjoy the hotel facilities, use the pool etc. We find a lot of people travel with with multiple sclerosis with us and they find it very tiring to be out every day. So it's nice that they can have a lie-in, get up late and go out in the afternoon or have a complete day off and, and be free to do whatever they want to do in between. And I think that's important to get the balance right. Although some people like to be traveling all the time, others do need a big break in between and it's you don't want to overstretch yourself and not enjoy the holiday. Financial protection. Wings on Wheels has our own atoll. And all our holiday packages are at all protected by the Civil Aviation Authority. The at all number is 9989. And if you want more information on this, you can look on the at all website. This is how you contact us. I hope you've enjoyed my speech with you. Um, I hope to have some questions from you later. I look forward to hearing from you, especially if you're a member of a group. We really would like to work with groups, clubs, associations, societies, charities, where they have people that would like to come away but don't know how to go arranging it. We'd really like to be able to do that for them and get them moving into other areas of the world where they can enjoy themselves. Brilliant. That's Thank you very me. much. Thank you. That was fantastic. It's some really helpful information. And what I'll do in terms of all the contact details, I'll send an email out with the video recording as well so people can use that to get back in touch with you if they haven't caught the details now, yeah? Okay, brilliant, thank you. Cool, are you right if you go on to the right hand side and right click on my name to make me the presenter again, yeah? Um, yep. But thanks very much for that, Jean. It's been great having your input and experience of all the holidays you've done to really put it in a broader context, so thank you very much for that. It's okay. Can you see where it is on the right? It's under attendee list, and then it might be under staff. There'll be my name somewhere, and then you just right click. There you go. Brilliant. Great. Thanks a lot, Gina. We'll start again on the Q and A. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Right, well, I think we'll move straight on to Carrie-Anne now. Um, just basically the format is as Carrie-Anne's going to talk 
for 10 minutes and then Lani is going to talk for 10 minutes and then we'll have 10 minutes for question and answers um, and I've just been told that I have to evacuate this radio room dead on 3 o'clock so um, normally we would go over but we will have to sort of stick to that time limit um, however we'll all be in contact after today as well so I think the most important thing is to get the, the speakers to share the information and we can still continue talking as well after the webinar today. So carry on, can you hear me okay there? Yeah, hi, I'm here. Brilliant. Okay, I'll, I'll pop it on presenter mode and uh, off you go with your slides as well, but thanks for um, joining okay. us today. Thank you. Okay, so my name's Carrie Ann, um, and I've been working for Tourism for All, TFA, um, since 2005. Um, as a wheelchair user, I love travel, and working for TFA is, is sort of my dream job. It's, it's a fantastic thing for me to be doing. Travel is one of my favorite things. Um, I love the thrill of being somewhere new, full of people to meet. Um, I grew up in a very small town in the Lake District, so being in a new place and being anonymous is actually quite a nice feeling. Um, and the excitement and anticipation that comes with being in a strange place is um, all of the fun of travel for me. Last summer, my fiancé and I stayed at the Turk Hotel in Olu Geniz, uh, which is on the beautiful Turkish turquoise coast. We met fellow holidaymakers who had been going to the Turk for 15 years, um, which was amazing. The atmosphere was just like being with one big group of friends. It was very relaxed. Um, and the accessibility of, of the accommodation wasn't perfect but sometimes that makes it much more of an adventure. Uh, so, Vitalize and TFA. So, way back in the summer of 2005, I was working on a supermarket checkout. Uh, there was a distinct lack of accessible jobs in the area where I live. I applied for the position of booking team member within Vitalize. And they decided I would be perfect for a new role, which they created with TFA. Back then, I'd never seen an accessible hotel room. Um, no, didn't even know that they existed. Things like automatic doors, low-level wardrobes, and rolling showers were an absolute luxury for me. So my role within accessible tourism uh, my work involves offering information on all aspects of accessible tourism and travel in the UK and overseas. From hotels to sources of holiday funding, I try and help with information on any, any question that anybody could possibly ask. I also run TFA's unique accommodation reservation service, as well as handling our friends membership scheme and sales of publications. Uh, accessible tourism again. So the best part of my job is promoting accessible tourism to disabled people and showing people that have perhaps lost confidence because of their disability, um, maybe younger disabled people or people who have just acquired a disability later in life, that travel can be made easier with the right information. Um, and enabling people from that information is, is sort of a big part of what I do. So, my top tips for accessible travel. Uh, check if the accommodation has been assessed for accessibility and obtain an access statement if possible. An access statement should detail everything from um, the approach to the accommodation, car parking, uh, if it's a hotel, things like access to reception and public areas, um, public disabled toilets, bedrooms, restaurants, everything that the hotel has to offer it should be able to tell you if it's accessible or not, um, all different measurements, all that sort of thing. Um, so we, we always advise that if that's available, you request a copy from the accommodation. Uh, if you need any aids or equipment to help you access the accommodation, like a, a shower chair, maybe a mobile hoist, um, check if the hotel or accommodation has these or if they know of any organization that you can hire them from locally. Um, and we also have lots of contact details for different organizations that do this, both in the UK and overseas. Uh, 
If the accommodation has a restaurant on site, make sure that you can access it and that they can provide menus in a format that is accessible to you. Um, maybe things like braille menus, large print menus. Hotels usually have this available but may need some warning that you're going to use it. Um, we've had lots of instances where they have had them but haven't been able to find them, not sure where they are. So it's always worth giving the hotel a bit of warning that you need to sort of thing. Uh, when visiting attractions, check if they provide concessions for a disabled person and companion. Most places admit companions free of charge if you take along supporting documentation. Um, in this country, things like a letter from the DWP to say that you qualify for disability benefits, um, or a blue badge for parking, or a mail card usually will suffice. Research local bars and restaurants before you travel so that you can be confident in their accessibility. So then all you need to worry about is having a good time. So, more information about Tourism for All. We're a national charity dedicated to making tourism welcoming to all. We work with policy makers, businesses and organisations of disabled people. We chair the Department of Culture, Media and Sports Accessibility Stakeholder Forum, which is a group of uh, lots of different organisations that have a commitment to accessibility within tourism. So we, we meet quarterly to discuss developments in all the different businesses and how we can work together closer to improve accessibility. And we are campaigning to create a legacy, a legacy of accessibility from the 2012 game. Our information service, we give information where you can, we give information to help you find where you can go, stay or visit. We offer an active network, passing on information about the best and seeking to help change the worst. And we would like you to take part in this with us. We always encourage people to give us feedback about their holidays and travel, good or bad. Um, because if, you know, things can't be improved unless people are made aware of it. And we also like to contact providers who are giving good accessibility um, and chat about them and make more people aware of them. Our membership scheme, which I run, offers a hotel reservation service, accessible rooms at discounted rates. The Open Britain magazine, which is our new publication, um, provides travel, lifestyle and practical information to disabled people, older people and carers. It features exclusive offers, campaign news, legal updates and much more information to whet your appetite, from events to attractions to destinations. The magazine includes a series of supplementary documents, supplementary directories, for example, a directory of shop mobility outlets with the first edition and accommodation with the second edition. Um, we also include lots of different editorial articles about different people's travel experiences. My travel experiences are quite often featured. Um, so if anybody has anything like that that they'd like to submit to the magazine, uh, my contact details will be at the end. So please do get in touch with me. Open Britain. Our Open Britain initiative has been going from strength to strength in the last few years. It's now a quarterly magazine, which I've just mentioned, um, an associated website, openbritain.net, which has directories of accessible accommodation, attractions, transport and travel, and uh, social outlets. And soon to come, iPhone and web app platforms taken from this data. Thanks to the support of BT, Open Britain is helping TFA to achieve its cherished goal to open Britain to all. Now this is just a general summary of TFA's activities, um, which most of which I've just spoken about, but any questions that anybody has, obviously I'm, I'm open to chat about those at the end, or you can get in touch with me. Uh, these are my contact details at TFA here, um, and any question about accessible tourism, I will try and help you with. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Karianne. And um, as I said before, I'll pop all of the general details and resources and all the information into the email along with the video recording as well. So 
people can get that on their email afterwards. But that was really, really useful, and thank you for sharing that with us all. Thanks, Martin. Well, are you right to pop it back onto presenter mode, yeah? Yeah, just for me. Okay, there you go. Great, thanks a lot, and we'll come back on at the end of the Q&A, yeah? Thanks, Martin. Okay, thank you. Brilliant. So, without further ado, I shall move it on to our third and final speaker today, who is Lani. Can you hear me okay there, Lani? Yes, I can. Brilliant. Okay, well, I'll, um, I'll pass it over for you to deliver your slides as well, yeah? Thank you very much. Brilliant. Off you go, Lani. Thank you. Okay. Right, so you can see my screen okay then? Yeah, that's perfect. Hello. I can see yeah, yeah, we can see you perfectly clear there. Brilliant. Excellent, brilliant. Okay. Well I thought I would um, first start by just painting a bit of a background picture of who I am, uh, what I'm passionate passionate about and what I have to share about bridging the gap and perceived barriers to travel and hints and tips to negotiate some of them. I've been involved with the, within the disability field now for over 17 years, originating back in Australia, Melbourne, where I gained my degree in disability studies. And during that time, I've truly gained an insightful knowledge, awareness and appreciation and understanding of the unique challenges and obstacles that are faced by people with different types of disabilities or health issues. And that's been definitely helped by meeting my um, my now new husband, uh, he's paraplegic and we do a lot of travelling together. A great deal of my work is focused on um, rehabilitation through recreation and travel, which has allowed me to really fall on my feet while I was in, I was in Canada for four years um, and was in a brilliant role of running an adaptive ski program out in a ski resort. Uh, Whistler, British Columbia in Canada, which is where the last Winter Paralympics and Olympics were held. And I just love to hear adaptive ski students tell their stories about how they came to be on top of a mountain, whether they were traveling on their own or with their friends and family, and uh, whether their disability was congenital, existed from birth or acquired, whether it be through, say, spinal cord injury or maybe amputee, hearing impairment, visual impairment, any type of illness or health condition, whether it be MS, diabetes, and the list really goes on. But my point being, no matter where these individuals came from geographically or circumstantially, they were all very clear what they were after, and that was to be in pursuit of a rich, quality life um, choosing to engage in activities that gave them that buzz. You know, the one, that feeling, the one that you realize that you're truly alive. And it was due to this um, that I created Bridging the Gap, which is a social enterprise. Um, and it's through life coaching and creating new accessible opportunities for people with disabilities to take part and in sports and adventure-based activities, um, making it easier to lead greater fulfilling lives whether it be at home, work, or in leisure. And um, so with Bridging the Gap Adventures, uh, it creates adaptive sports and events uh, and travel opportunities for people with disabilities. And we're also looking at ways that we can always make it open and inclusive for able-bodied friends and family members to take part as well. And these trips or events can take place either in the UK, UK or overseas and abroad. Um, and most of the areas that we're delivering our, um, our programs or holidays are in North America and um, in Egypt, Sharm El Sheikh at the moment, but looking to extend. So adaptive sports events and adventure travel options include a bit are not limited to um, scuba diving, alpine skiing and snowboarding, Nordic skiing and biathlon, snowmobiling, dog sledding, wheelchair curling, sledge hockey, sea kayaking and come try at multi-sports events which might be held at leisure centres where people have 
an opportunity to try a range of different types of activities, which could be like archery, wheelchair basketball, wheelchair laser tag. Um, the list is quite extensive. And um, just to give you a little bit of a look of um, one of the groups that we had go out to um, Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt, we had a, a group of five individuals, mix of people to, um, coming along with a, a partner or maybe a carer. People always bring along their own carers. And uh, the gentleman that you can see on the left hand side, he's tetraplegic. So we always look for um, different um, ser activity service providers that specialise in providing instruction and support for people with disabilities, whatever they might be, to make the activities as accessible as possible. And just a few more pics here of um, Sharm El Sheikh. And not all the times doing um, activities, there's also R&R &R days and the opportunity to explore and uh, just sort of soak in some of the culture as well. So the Bridging a Gap Adventure Trips and Events will appeal to people who want to maybe try a new sport for the first time. Um, equally, for somebody who has tried something for the first time and wants to continue on um, building upon their skills, then this is a way to do it with the Bridging a Gap um, group trips that we put together or organising custom made trips. And the, um, the bonus of that is opening um, up the opportunity to meet new people who might be in a similar situation to you and sharing the same interests. Um, and of course family and friends are more than welcome to partake as well. Um, there will be more information on the Shiny New website and the information will be at the end of um, this slideshow. Um, there's only so much information I can sort of touch on today, um, but I will give you some more information uh, at the end of how you can stay in touch with us. Like I said, Shiny New website will be up and running hopefully in the next couple of weeks and we would like to keep you informed of that. Um, but until then, I'm just going to give you some helpful little um, tips that um, I have picked up along the way that people have also shared with me. So um, I wanted to highlight the three golden rules to booking a trip abroad with confidence. And that is um, booking with an ATOL um, protected trip wherever you can. And the benefits of doing this are that the, um, the ATOL scheme ensures that if you're if the, the company should go under, um, you're entitled to a full refund um, and if you're already abroad, you can continue a holiday without any issues. Um, additionally, if any part of your trip goes wrong, then the atoll holder is responsible for sourcing it out for you. So that's definitely a benefit of going with a, a tour operator rather than putting bits and pieces of the holiday together yourself. The other second golden rule, booking with someone that you can trust who understands your unique needs as a disabled traveller. Not all tour operators are savvy enough to know all the right questions to ask of you to gain the information that they need to find the right, whether it be accommodation, um, assistance flights, um, all the aspects of the holiday. Um, that need to be taken into consideration. And you might not always know what you need to tell. So speaking to um, somebody who knows the right questions to ask can set you up for a really good holiday and provide you with a peace of mind. Third golden rule, taking out uh, travel insurance policy. Um, and I know that's already been covered, but things that need to really be taken into consideration is um, medical cover, so do exclude any pre-existing medical conditions, otherwise you, you might find yourself a little bit stuck. Um, and that will also provide you, we're looking for a policy that covers you for any emergency systems, um, personal liability, baggage and lost belongings, any delays and cancelling and containment of your holiday. Um, and um, 
the other really important thing to consider with medical cover is that the cost of medical services in many places, especially North America, is astronomical um, and the, the costs can be absolutely sky high. So you don't want any nasty surprises on your holiday. So do um, look at taking out your insurance policy. Um, around about 10 months ago, I did um, some research on what were people's most common concerns when flying on a commercial airliner. And I just thought it would be quite useful to, to share them with you because there could be a few of them you can identify with. Um, and they are um, discomfort and pain while traveling, accessing or not being able to access onboard toilet facilities, bladder or bowel accidents, deep vein thrombosis, pressure sores and skid damage, finding the right travel insurance, wheelchair or mobility aid damage during transit, luggage medical supplies or equipment lost during transit, transferring to or from the plane seat, and not being sure of how to adequately prepare for the journey, and what I need to check with the airline or inform them before I travel. Generally not knowing what to expect from the airport check-in through to arriving at the de end destination. Levels of disability awareness and appropriate support for airport staff and airline crew. And wanting own wheelchair or mobility aid to be brought directly to the plane once lands it landed. Um, and and not having to collect your wheelchair or mobility aid when you get to luggage claim. Um, so unfortunately, because of the restriction of time, I would love to be able to go through um, each one of those concerns and provide hints and tips. Unfortunately, we don't have the time luxury of that today. So I'm just going to um, just pass on a little few. And um, by all means, give me, um, email me, and I'll be more than happy to share more tips that hopefully would be quite useful to you. But until then, um, knowing the dimensions and the weight of your wheelchair or mobility aid, this is really useful for your tour operators to know when dealing with airlines, hotels, and transfers. And it's the questions that they can research and ask for you, just in terms of basic uh, getting through the um, doorways of particular hotels. They might be wheelchair accessible in, in some areas, but then other aspects of the hotel might so might not be. So knowing all those types of things is, is really useful. Um, and a tip that's been passed on to me is somebody who does travel quite a bit, uh, rather than having to sort of take the dimensions and, and organize the, forgetting the weight of his wheelchair and all the rest, he keeps a note in the back of his passport for future reference. So it's just there for when he needs to refer to it. If you have a wheelchair with a removable cushion, um, take it onto the plane with you. Um, this will minimize the chances of it being lost in transit. And you can also use it to, to sit on, provide pressure relief and care for your skin if that's a concern. Like I said, if you want any further um, tips and hints, please give me um, uh, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to forward them on to you. And also at the moment, we're looking for people who would like to take part in a new Bridging the Gap Adventures Trailblazers focus group and are quite keen to contribute their knowledge about what they've gone through their own experiences as a traveller with disability. And what we're looking to do is to put together um, a really useful resource resource that people can use. And so we've had another little sneaky tip that's hit, snuck in there and it doesn't want it to disappear. So packing medical supplies, double check you have enough um, and throw in a few spares um, to arrive at your destination and realize that you don't have enough to see you through the holiday um, can be quite an anxious experience. Or if a medical supply is a bit faulty, if you know you've got a spare one there, it can just provide you with added peace of mind. 
Most airlines allow free luggage allowance for medical equipment. Do check with the airline, but if you just mark up an extra bag um, that's got a sticker or a label on it with um, medical equipment on it, that can be really useful to know that you don't need to necessarily always pay extra. Pack all or some of your medical plant supplies into your carry-on luggage to minimise the risk if your suitcase should go missing then you've got your drugs or whatever it is with you. But you do need to double check that it meets the customs regulations um, just in regards to sharps and also if you've got large amounts of, of liquids. But you can also check with your GP as he might be able to write you um, a medical note. Um, label luggage and equipment with contact details in the event that you should be separated so you can be reunited as soon as possible. Um, what uh, we tend to do is to put our email address on absolutely everything so it's quite easy for people to get hold of us and um, a phone number, doesn't matter where we are. Our home address, we might not be going back home, we might be going somewhere else. So it's the easiest way that we've found it people can get in touch with us if they need to. And thankfully that's only happened once and it's all been very smooth. Um, so these are all the contact details, but, but just before I go, I'm going to try playing you um, a video that's been put together to highlight winter sporting activities. Um, and in this case, it's featuring Whistler. So bear with me for a moment while I just play this for you. Okay, and here we go. So hopefully that will give you a flavour of um, the winter sports that we have to offer as well, but further information will be at our um, new website coming soon. Brilliant, and thank you very much. To for that work out how to hand it over to you, Martin. Okay, cool. Um, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm going to get kicked out of this room in two minutes. So I think what this has really shown us is that travel is a very, very broad subject and I've tried to get a really good breadth of information and I think, as you've all sort of said, there would have been a lot more that you could have shared as well. So um, thank you for all, you know, giving that information and time today. I think I'm, you're, all, you're all unmuted now, so if you talk to everyone on the webinar, can hear you, but I think in terms of the Q&A, um, we're going to have to leave it, and then I think if people have any burning questions, um, they can email any of you directly, if that's okay with you guys. Yeah, that's fine, Martin, no problem. Yeah, absolutely fine with me. Brilliant. So, um, yeah, but as I say, I, th I think it was most important that we've covered all the information that we have today, so everyone that's attended can, you know, hopefully been feeling quite inspired and informed on travel and sort of looking at their own um, travel experiences and what they want to do next. So, um, yeah, if anyone wants to get in touch afterwards, that would be fantastic. And I'll share the video and all of your contact details so that we can carry on talking about it. And I think the other part of it really is that maybe next time we do a travel um, with audience feedback, we could always home in on a certain part of travel that's more helpful to people. So, cool. All right, well, thank you to all the speakers, Lani, Carrie Ann, and Jean. And thank you to everyone who logged on and watched the, the session as well today. And I'll get this email sorted and sent out as, as quick as possible. Is there anything any of you want to say at all? 
on a lot of the leaving notes. Just if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to contact e either of us. Brilliant. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, guys. And we'll, um, I, I don't know if it's my slide showing or not at the moment, but the next one is Wednesday, the 25th of April, and that's on employment. So if anyone wants to join in on that, I think it's coming up now. You can see it on the slide. So, um, yeah, if you, want, if you want to come along and have a similar experience and discussing issues on employment, then that's when the next webinar is. But um, I'm going to log off before I get arrested by the Spanish police. So thanks for, uh, for joining, <laughs> and I'll see you all soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.